Hey, what's up? Richard Bryce here. In this video, I want to show you two really simple things that you can work on to develop cat-like reflexes at the net so you can start to dominate opponents, make sure you're putting those balls away, and hopefully reduce the amount of times that you get passed when you play. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you'd give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay, so the two things we're gonna be working on are seeing faster and moving faster. So we need to improve your visual processing speeds so you can react faster and we need to work on the movement to the ball. The way that we're gonna work on the visual processing speeds, I'm gonna show you a very simple drill that you can do. I'm gonna be using my thumbs as targets and I'm gonna be switching between those targets. So you might not be able to see it uh, because my eyes might be a little bit squinted because of the sun, but I'm looking from thumb to thumb, just switching between the targets as quickly as I can. Now, ideally my head's still, but often when I demonstrate this sort of thing on camera, I'm not focusing, I'm doing a bad job and my head starts to move. But you wanna focus and keep your head as still as possible and try and move your eyes as quickly as you can. You wanna practice it going from side to side. You wanna practice it going up and down. And what you also want to do is you want to practice at different distances. So here I'm focusing on things up close, but I also maybe want to be out on court and choose something at the opposite end of the court and switch between two targets that way. Now, when you first start this, your eye movements are probably going to be a little bit slower, but if you work on it, it'll actually get faster. And as that happens, you'll be able to react more quickly at the net. Now you can turn this into a fun game. You can set yourself a timer. So you can maybe set it for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, and you can actually build up over time to work on your endurance and see how many switches you can make in that time so you can make sure that you're progressing. Now, this is just one of the things that you can work on. There's actually a lot of different things that you can do to help with this. So uh, if you're interested in that, I've created a free tennis vision starter program that's gonna show you more ways to train your vision that's really gonna help with your reflexes. I'll place a link down in the description and I'll place a link up there so you can grab hold of that. So now let's have a look at the movement. Okay, so when it comes to the movement, there's a few things that are gonna be important. We've got the split step, so the actual technique of the split step, we've got the timing of the split step, and then we've got the first step to the ball. So we're gonna cover all of them here. The first one is gonna be the timing of the split step. So obviously for the split step, we're landing, and ideally we're landing just after our opponent makes contact with the ball. The reason that we want to do that is because we're doing this split step to create a stretch reflex in our muscles, basically turn our body into an elastic coil so we can spring off and we can move faster. So we want to have landed just after our opponents have contacted the ball so then that we can see the direction that the ball is going in and we can react quickly to that. And obviously that's why we've got to work on that vision stuff we've just talked about because the faster you can process, the more you can kind of play around with this timing aspect but that's the first aspect you've got to try and get that timing just after they've contacted it if that's really difficult for you then it might be a good idea just to do kind of do like a piston split step so you know your opponents at the, the baseline they're about to hit their ground stroke and you just get those feet moving so then at least you'll get that elastic potential and you'll be able to use it. So that's part one, really work on the timing of the split step. And of course, if you're not doing it, make sure you do it. When you're approaching the net, you're gonna do the split step. Whatever happens, you hit your volley before the second volley, you gotta do the split step. Now we need to talk about the important parts of the split step. So I've made another detail that goes into like full detail about all of the specific elements. I'll place a link down in the description, but here, what I wanna let you know is the lower and wider the better. The wider you can go, the faster you can move. This is just physics, because the step that we're gonna be taking, we're basically gonna be dropping our foot under. We've gotta have the shin pointing the opposite direction that we wanna move, and then we're gonna be driving and cutting things off. So, if you're in a narrow stance, it doesn't allow you to push off very far. The wider you are, the more you can push off. So we've got to get that wide split step. Here is where flexibility is really important. So at the moment, I'm a little bit stiff today. I did a hike yesterday, so I'm a bit stiff today. I'm less flexible than normal, but normally I'm not that flexible. This is something I work a lot on for this reason, to enable me to be faster around court. So it's something that I highly recommend you working on if you wanna be faster around the net, because plain and simply, if you are really inflexible, it doesn't allow you to do this. So a very simple thing that you can do to, to work on your flexibility is to squeeze and make the muscles strong in these positions. So if you're anything like me, stretching 
doesn't work. And it doesn't work for a lot of people because often muscles are tight because the brain holds them tight. So stretching, yeah, your brain goes no. But if you make yourself strong in these positions, it can help. So I can get in my split step position and I can literally just practice squeezing my legs together to strengthen the muscles on the inside. And that's gonna make them stronger and then that's going to allow me to go a little bit wider. And if you work on this over time, you'll be able to get wider and wider and wider. Now, just a word of caution, make sure you're protecting your knees when you do it. So start off gently and then build up to squeeze a little bit harder. And we can obviously do the opposite. We can also work on pushing our feet out. So this court's a little bit slippy, not the best surface for me to do it on, but by driving our feet out, it's going to strengthen the muscles on both sides. And that can really help to have help us to have a wider, more stable split step, which then we can react more quickly with. So now the next piece of that is gonna be the, uh, the actual step itself. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing my foot underneath, like I said, with that shin angle, I'm lowering my body weight. So you're not gonna be doing this, you're gonna be staying nice and low and trying to cut off the angle. And it's gonna be the same both sides. We're trying to cut the angle off. So, this is also something that you want to work on and develop your ability to push off further and further. So you can use this as a bit of a test yourself. You can be in that split step. How much ground can you cover with one step? How much ground can I cover with the other step? And you know, depending how old you are, depending on what's going on, you want to try and train your ability to be able to get to that sideline with one step, because obviously, if you can get to that sideline or pretty much the sideline, and if you're changing the angle that you do this, that's going to allow you to cover pretty much everything on a singles court just with that one step, and that's going to be huge. And that's obviously what you see from the best players in the world and one of the reasons why they're so fast. But it really does depend on the hip flexibility and strength and that kind of thing. And obviously, it also depends on your visual processing speeds, which is why it's so important that you work on that side of thing as well. Okay. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Uh, make sure you grab that free Tennis Vision Starter Program. If you've got any questions or comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. If there's any videos you'd like to see, let me know about those as well. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.